What's up you guys? It's Laura Wells and I am going to share a story with you. Um, it is story time today. Uh, some of you who follow me for a long, long time, um, I actually get asked sometimes to talk about this on team calls, on team Zooms, in um, like Facebook groups and stuff like that, even at conferences and whatnot. Um, and I want to tell you guys this story, but first I want to preface like what I said in my title about being a statistic. I want you guys to take this kind of seriously and um, share this out. Let me know if you are commenting. I mean, if you are here live, comment below. Let me know that you are here live. I know that most people watch the replay, which is totally fine. That's the world we live in, right? Um, but I do want to make sure that if you are on here that I want to say hey. Um, hey there, Aubrey. I hope I'm saying your name right. I love your name. You have the prettiest name, first name and last name. It's so pretty. Um, so hey, Aubrey. Uh, thank you guys for joining. Hey, Carol Ann. Um, Y'all. The statistic says that in network marketing, but also just in general, like we're talking fitness, we're talking relationships, um, we are talking, I like talking about marriage, network marketing, I mean, but we're also talking about like realtors, um, people who start their own businesses, whether it's an Etsy shop, anything like that. Y'all, the statistics are alarming um, as far as this goes. And I, what I love to do is I love to share my heart, but I also love to share the heart and the hustle, right? I want you people to know that you can have both. Hey, Courtney, um, I want people to know that you can have both. I want people to know that you don't have to have all hustle and make it super successful in your business or your relationships or your fitness or whatever and lose yourself in the process. I think that too many people do that. So my mission, and I hope this is the case, and this is why it means so much to me, like when you share this out, when you share this with your teams or share it on your timelines, especially if you have the types of followers who like feeling uplifted, entertained, educated, and inspired, um, that is my heart. That's what I want you to come off of this video feeling like, dude, I can take on the world. <laughs> um, so that is my heart. Hopefully you guys feel the same way when you're off this video. Um, so if you do happen to share it, let me know and I'll give you a shout out and just say hello. Comment below if you're watching live. If you are new to my videos, comment new below so that I just know that you're new and I can say hi to you personally. Um, this is the deal, you guys. When I say don't, de don't be a statistic, what does that mean to you? Okay, because a lot of the people who are on my Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, a lot of them are in direct sales. I've been in the direct sales space for almost 20 years now. Um, and so I know that most of, my, most of my tribe are in network marketing, you're in direct sales, right? So if that's you, I want to know from you, what do you think of when you hear, don't be a statistic? I'd love your feedback on that. Um, what I think of when I hear that is that most people quit. So we know that, right? We know that most people quit. We know that happens. The question then becomes, why? Why do most people quit? Um, and I, I think I have the answer. Now, I do have a prop. Look at, I have a prop. I brought a prop. I'm gonna make sense of this in just a moment. Um, I usually don't bring props onto my videos, but this is going to be a story time, right? So you have to have pictures with your props, I mean, with your stories. Here's the thing. If you've been following me for a really long time, you've probably heard me tell this story because um, I've been asked this, to say this in these words a million times, but I didn't get this, I didn't make this stuff up um, myself. I actually heard this for the very first time a million years ago. Oh my gosh, it feels like probably over 15 years ago. Um, hey, Barbara. Um, through Les Brown. Okay, so I follow Les Brown, I love Les Brown. If y'all don't know who Les Brown is, y'all need to go follow him. Um, he's super motivational, but what I love about him is he paints pictures that make sense to your brain and so it sticks, it's like an anchor statement, right? And so this, I want you to like, this is your anchor. Like anytime you see a plant, you're gonna think of this video, okay? Okay, so what I say when I, when I say don't be a statistic is that most people fail. Okay, and exactly like Aubrey is saying, most people fail or they're experiencing failure. Now, I want to make a point that there's a big difference between the two. There's a big difference between failing at something and being a failure at something, okay? Really write that down because 
if you're failing at something, that's an event, that's a moment, that's a, that's a moment in time, okay? That does not make you as a person a failure at that thing. And I think a lot of times entrepreneurs, especially in network marketing, but really it could be with anything. It could be with your marriage. It could be with your fitness journey. A lot of times we associate if I'm failing at something or sliding backwards, that has to mean I'm a failure at this thing. And a lot of times what happens in that moment is your pride is the very first thing to like send the alarm bells is like, oh, we don't want to fail at something. We don't want to, we don't want to feel silly. We don't want to feel stupid. We don't want to feel like a failure. That feels bad. So you should quit. <laughs> okay. Now I talk a lot about the five second rule and the five, four, three, two, one challenge that, um, that Mel Robbins wrote a book about y'all. If, if you don't have that book, you need to go get that book like right now. Um, that's not what I'm talking about here. This story is about how to avoid becoming a statistic, what to do when you feel like you're not getting results fast enough. Y'all. Okay. Here's, here's story time. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I've been, I've been at this. I have been in the direct sales space. I started out uh, almost 20 years ago now doing home parties. Okay. So I started doing home parties for a kitchenware company, like kitchen tools and stuff like that. Pamper Jeff. Love Pamper Jeff. Um, but I was doing home parties. I was exhausted. I just wanted to be home with my kids. My kids were toddlers, like little, little kids, right? Um, and I wanted to be home with my kids, but I also wanted Target money. I mean, let's be real. I wanted money to spend at Target that wasn't going to impact our budget. You know what I'm saying? So the balance between the two is I discovered, okay, I can totally do this kitchen show that this chick is doing. If she can do that, I could do that because she was like one of those kinds of consultants. It's like she made it was, I mean, like, let's be real. <laughs> I could do that. Um, the thing is, is that I, I, first of all, I don't like to cook, nor do I uh, feel very good at cooking. That's not my expertise, okay? Um, also, I was very afraid of public speaking. So how weird was it for me, my very first experience as an entrepreneur, to get up in front of a room where you have to cook and speak at the same time? <laughs> Duh. But I didn't think of it at the time. What I thought of at the time was it's a means to an end. It's something to get me out of the house. It's to meet other people. Um, I was going to make extra money and all of that. Well, here's the thing. Um, direct sales, like this was before Facebook became a thing. I and mean, we still had online, but like there was message boards. Y'all remember message boards and like, um, what is that? Uh, like um, online chat, like AIM. Was that a th AIM? Like instant messenger with AOL. Do y'all remember? Am I like super old right now? I, I bet like for y'all youngerly. Younger folks, I'm like super elderly sounding right now. Anyway, so back in the day, we used to have like message boards and forums and um, bulletin boards and stuff like that. And so but that was before Facebook, right? So when Facebook and social media and stuff like that, I moved into the online marketing space, right? The, um, like the social media space. And I decided, okay, first of all, I don't want to have to do home parties three times a week. <laughs> no, no, nothing against those of y'all who do that. Cause like, seriously, I loved it. Um, but I was literally never home in my home-based business, right? Um, and so I went through times though, when I was with that company, I was with them for about eight years. I went through times where I was at the very top. In fact, in fact, a little, little fun fact about Laura, I broke the record of the fastest promoting director ever in Pamper Chef's 25 year at the time history. Um, I broke the record as the fastest promoting director. In fact, they couldn't award me that directorship until I was like at a certain period of time, it was like three months or something. Um, but the time that I actually qualified for it was the fastest that I went to that convention and I was being recognized. I was walking across the stage, which again was super scary because I'm afraid of being up on stage. Um, I, I was walking across the stage and I remember being invited to like, like super fancy breakfast and stuff with Doris Christopher and the um, founders of Pamper Jeff and the executives and whatnot. Um, and I remember them telling me like, you are the fastest promoting director in the history of our company. Now, I don't know. People have probably broken that by now. That was only at their 25th anniversary they They probably blew past that. Um, but I was at the top, top, like I was at, on my A game. Like I really worked my tail off. Okay. Also in that same business, we hit a slump, big slump. I mean, people were leaving. Um, there was like controversy in that company. They sold to Warren Buffett. There was controversy around that. Um, some prices increase and all that, you know, stuff happens, right? Like if you're in a company and it's, you're in there long term, 
um, things happen, right? There's going to be changes with like the economy and stuff like that. So um, we, I um, experienced like the up and then I also experienced the downside. Like I really did experience people leaving, feeling like, oh my gosh, like I can't get a new customer, I can't get a new team member. Um, I was hosting parties, like in actual living rooms, like real live living room. I feel like this, like this right now, like I'm in, I feel like I'm in your living room. This to me is no different now. It was at first. This to me now is no different than me standing up at the front of your living room or sitting around your kitchen table with a bunch of your friends. Like I used to do all the time, except you can reach thousands of people. <laughs> so, so it's really fun. Um, but I went through that whole process of feeling like, um, it wasn't going fast enough. Right. And I remember back then, like we used to have like team meetings and stuff. There would always be people recognized. A lot of times it was me being recognized, but there were times where it was not me. In fact, there was a big stretch of time that it was not me. In fact, it was like, why do I even come to these things? Like, seriously, I'm, I'm doing all this work, but nothing is happening. So here's my story for you guys. I want to share with you guys. Um, and I have this prop because I want to make a point. This, this is not the thing I'm talking about though. Um, I wanna tell you guys the story of the Chinese bamboo tree. A lot of you guys have probably heard this story, but I wanna make it a little bit different from you, uh, for you in relation to your relationships, your marriage, your business, your fitness, your, your everything, okay? The Chinese bamboo tree. So for those of you who don't know, my team is probably like, oh, I've heard this story. It's like, it's okay, gather around the campfire, folks. It's like, it's story time. So the Chinese bamboo tree is literally, um, there's such a great business lesson. This is gonna be one of those like anchor moments for you. You're going to look at the bamboo tree or any kind of plant and you're gonna think of this. This is, and I feel like in network marketing especially, but anything, your marriage, anything like that, it is a test of your patience, of your faith, of your perseverance, of your grit, like your internal, your heart, your fortitude and your personal development. And here's what I mean, like in the Chinese bamboo plant, so if you were to go out right now and somebody plants a Chinese bamboo plant, right? So here's what we see on the front end. Courtney, I love that I'm in your living room and your daughter's watching with you. Hey girl. Um, so <clears throat> what you see, and this is very similar to what we see in network marketing, is we see, oh, go buy this seed, okay? And six weeks, you're gonna have it go from a seed to over 80 feet tall. Six weeks. It's gonna go from dirt to 80 feet tall, okay? And you're thinking, whoa, that's amazing. I've never seen an opportunity like that. Sign me up. Oh, I'm on board. I'm on board with that program. Okay, sign me up. Six weeks, I can handle anything for six weeks. Okay, y'all, stay with me. What you don't realize is that in the first year, 12 months, first year, you're gonna plant that seed and you're gonna water it every day. You have to be sure also to plant it on fertile ground. So in terms of our personal development, that means fertile ground to me means, have you gone through the stuff? Have you been educated? Do you work on personal development? Do you watch and share and comment on videos like this? Do you not only consume these videos, do you put it into action? Do you go to the conventions? Do you read the books? Do you listen to the podcasts? Personal development is a big thing, okay? That's fertile ground. Also, is your heart in check? There are a lot of people who plant their seed in fertile ground and the fertilizer is like literally, it's, it's not of integrity. <laughs> Okay, so I'll talk about that in a second too. So here's the thing. In the first year, you're gonna plant that seed and you're gonna water it every single day consistently. Don't miss a day, cause it'll die. Touch your business every single day. Water the plant every single day because if you don't, it goes away, right? Year two, nothing happens. Zero happens, all you're seeing is a big pile of dirt. And it's around that time, year one, year two, even year three, even your four, because nothing is happening in the first four years, nothing. I'm talking, you look out your window and it's dirt and you're watering it every freaking day and you know the ground is fertile ground. 
and you still keep make, making sure you're pouring more and you're pouring more and you make sure that it continues to stay fertile. You're continuing to fill your mind. You're continuing to uplift your spirits. But now your neighbor peeks across the fence and they're like, dude, what are you doing with that thing? Why are you watering soil when clearly nothing's happening over there? Maybe you should pick up that seed and plant it somewhere else. Is this making sense to you? Are you getting this? Maybe instead of a bamboo, this Chinese bamboo plant thing, maybe you should plant an apple tree. You know, I've heard that apple trees are a lot easier to grow. Is this making sense? Share this out. Y'all, there are people that you know right now who are considering becoming a statistic and they don't even know it. They don't even know that they're not, they're, they're doing the work What's happening under here is the most important part. What's happening in here is all of the nutrients. It's all of the foundation. It's all of everything that you need right in here. But you don't see any of this stuff on top until year five. Year five, very similar to a network marketing business. Year five, very similar to any kind of entrepreneurial venture that you have. If you're not doing it consistently every single day, and I tell my team all the time, this is not like, I'm not talking seven hours a day every single day for five years. I'm talking about take five minutes and touch your business. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Not, you just have to be consistent. The consistency is what matters. Not necessarily how many hours you pour into it. Of course, can you speed up the process in business? by condensing it, by doing more of what works and more of it that is proven to work, the methods, the systems, yes, you can shorten that learning curve, absolutely. But generally speaking, it's five years before you're gonna see the green, like literally and figuratively, okay? But here's the problem. Here's the problem that most people experience is that they start listening to the neighbor. They start listening to the naysayers that get in their mind and they're like, you know, I think I was sold just a scam. Maybe it's the comp plan. Maybe it's my upline. Maybe it's my downline. You know, all the drama over there in that sideline, they're not acting in integrity. They're totally full of drama. They're spreading rumors and gossip and on this sideline that has nothing to do with your paycheck. <laughs> But you know, it's gotta be all of that. It's the CEOs, it's the product, it's the comp plan, it's the shipping time. All of this stuff, y'all, that is why people, that's what gets in their head. They start listening to that and they're like, you know, I just wonder, you know, cause I saw so-and-so, um, you know, Mary, she planted an apple tree and her apple tree, I saw it with my own eyes. She planted that apple tree and four weeks later, she's got a tree in her yard. Maybe I should just plant an apple tree. Maybe over there, they've got lemon trees over there. And you know, I saw it with my own eyes. That person planted a lemon tree and eight weeks later, there's a lemon tree in their front yard. Maybe I should just go do that. I'll pick this up and plant it somewhere else. Y'all, here's the reality. Wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> um, what you don't know is that in year five, it goes from dirt and your little seed is under there, but all this time over the past five years, it's been growing the foundation, it's been growing the roots. You've been growing something. You just can't see it yet because year five happens and it's like, what in the actual heck? Six weeks goes by in year five and it goes from dirt to 80 feet tall. That is the Chinese bamboo tree. Zero to 80 feet tall. Let me relate this to your business. That is when you see someone who joins their company and in 17 days, like myself, 17 days, I earned the car bonus in my company. Did it really take me 17 days to earn the car bonus? No, that is what you see though. That's what you get the recognition. You know, you see the emails and you see the pictures and the photos of, you know, somebody earning their rank or somebody earning their car or somebody earning a trip or whatever, right at the top of the pay plan and you see, the, you see the green, you're seeing the plant. What you didn't see is the months, years, or even decades that they were doing the work, laying the foundation. 
They're laying the foundation under here before they even got the public acknowledgement, right? So you might see someone who comes in and they join and four months later, they're at the top of the pay plan and you're like, what the heck? I've been at this for a year and a half. I've been at this for two years, three years. Why isn't that me? That is when you start considering, when you let that get into your head, that's when you start considering maybe an apple tree would be easier. Maybe a lemon tree would be easier. You know, those avocado trees, they're all the rage right now. Everybody's posting about them on Facebook. Maybe I should just join them and get in early and whatever. <laughs> Y'all, it's just not like that. You have to put in the work to get the, the rewards on the other side. This is like, this is, I think, especially in the United States, but I think it's all around the world. We live in a microwave society. We live in a, we live in an instant gratification society, right? We want microwaves to cook our food faster. We want to get in the fast lane to drive faster. We want less red lights because for goodness sakes, it's going to make me wait for 90 more seconds to get to where I'm going. Um, we want ATM machines instead of going inside the bank to get our money. We want the quick dry settings on our dishwasher. Like we want fast results. That is just the world we live in right now. I'm here to tell you that when you start a business or you are marriage, this is a great example, awesome marriages and awesome relationships take freaking work. So does your business. So do the abs that, that your neighbor has, right? It takes work. It takes consistency. It does not take just signing up to do the thing and then you just let it ride and like hope for the best. Dude, like that's why most people fail at a lot of stuff. Did y'all know the divorce rate is like 50 or 60% right now in the United States? Y'all, why? Because it takes work and most people aren't willing to work hard at something consistently. They'll do a little bit and then they'll like skate off and then they'll do a little bit and then they'll do nothing. You can't do that right? You're laying the foundation, but it has to be done in consistency and it has to be done with faith. Here's what I want to share with you guys too. If you know that you know that the thing that you're doing works, now that's going to be different for all of us, okay? So like if you're in network marketing or direct sales, if one person is making money with your comp plan, it works, if one person, I don't care, don't, don't you start the whole like, well, in my city, everybody's broke or in my state, nobody in my state likes blah, blah. Don't do the all or nothing thing because that will kill you, right? Um, it'll totally kill your business. Hey, Carrie Lynn. So it'll totally kill your business if you do that. What I want you to focus on is if one person in your entire company ever walks the stage for doing something awesome, you can too. Why? Because in network marketing, it's equal opportunity. It does not matter your race, your background, your demographic, your city, your color, your orientation, what you do in the bedroom, like none of that matters at all in network marketing. It only matters what you do. What you do, your faith, your heart, your integrity, your work ethic, your grit, your elbow grease, how consistent can you be and how long are you going to stick to it? Think about the guy with the bamboo tree. Thank you for sharing, Bonnie. Thank you for sharing, Melba. You guys, think about the bamboo tree. Seriously, every time you think of quitting, think of that. You're planting so much nutrition in that foundation of your business that if you stop and you let up even for a day you're going you're not just you're not just stopping you're going backwards thank you for sharing terry i appreciate that so here's here's what's needed all that's needed is faith okay because if you know something works you need to have the faith and the faith is honestly is what's going to keep you coming back consistently to keep doing the thing that you know works now i will preface it with you have to do the thing that actually works if you're just spamming a bunch of people <laughs> to grow your business or doing it in a really shady unethical way um it that will backfire okay I'll talk about that on another video. There's actually some like, I really want to point out, um, some people are building their business on sand versus building their business on rock. And that, um, I'd love to talk about that. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments if you're interested in that. There's some, there's some stuff that, you know, goes on in every industry. We're talking realtors, accountants, whatever. Every industry has people who are building their business on sand and it just doesn't last. And I want to kind of give you some, some tips on what to look for and how to avoid that in another video. But 
here's what I want you to avoid is avoid the thinking and, and the listening to people and listening to your own self when you start looking at other people's recognitions and other people earned a trip and other people are going on the stage and that person was asked to speak and how come I'm not? And how come my upline keeps paying more attention to this person and not me? How come my upline likes all of their posts and not mine? Y'all, your own voice in your head is just like nosy neighbor across the, you know, across the way who's peeking his head over the fence going, you know, I don't think that bamboo plant thing is working out for you. You keep watering that thing every single day and it's been like four and a half years and nothing is happening. You should just pick up and move. That own voice could be you, right? So I want to leave you guys with this and y'all have probably heard some of this before, but, um, the reality is that, you know, you know that like Michael Jordan, right? Michael Jordan is like this world famous basketball player. <laughs> Everyone knows Michael Jordan. Um, did y'all know that he got kicked off the high school basketball team? Did y'all know that? Isn't that crazy? Like, can you imagine? First of all, I mean, I've had kids in sports. I know Barbara Warren's on here. Barbara Warren's had kids in sports. How much effort does it take? And how much guts does it take for your kid to sign up, to try out, to do the work, to make the team? Okay, so imagine Michael Jordan signed up, worked out, tried out, made the team, and got kicked off. Michael Jordan. Henry Ford, another great example. Did y'all know? You All you know is that Ford Motor Company, right? Henry Ford, oh my gosh, Ford Motor Company, so successful. Oh my gosh, what an amazing stroke of luck that he had. No, five major business flops before Ford Motor Company took off. Y'all, J.K. Rowling. Did y'all know, by the way, that you're supposed to pronounce her name Rowling, like Rolling Stone and not Rowling? Ah, fun fact. You always learn something on my videos and telling you, and they're probably really random and weird, but there you go. J.K. Rowling. Y'all, Harry Potter was literally written. She just literally sat at her computer writing that book, writing and editing and then writing it again and she probably shared it with friends and family saying please edit this and please look at this over and please proofread this before i send this off and oh my gosh i'm just she's probably spent so long on that and so much of her heart and so much of her mind and blood sweat and tears but it was turned down and literally rejected 12 times 12 times what if on the 11th time she thought, I guess I'm just not a very good writer. I guess this business isn't for me. Maybe I could just pick up and plant my seed somewhere else. Like, what if she did that on the, most people quit on the first rejection. <laughs> Do y'all see? Most people, if you're in network marketing, most of your team, will call their Aunt Matilda. I'm always talking about Aunt Matilda. I'm really sorry if y'all actually have an Aunt Matilda because she's like the villain in all of my stories. But if y'all have an Aunt Matilda and she, you know, your new promoter calls Aunt Matilda and says, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to just sign up for this thing and I'm really excited about this product. Would you be open to giving it a try? And Aunt Matilda's like, no, that's stupid. First rejection is usually when most people quit let alone the fifth rejection, the eighth rejection, the 11th rejection, 12th rejection, and then you've got a Harry Potter on your hands. Like, what even, right? So it's the same thing as most people get super fired up when they see somebody presenting, like they're on a presentation or they're in front of the room and they're like, listen, this is a Chinese bamboo plant. It's not, by the way, but this is a Chinese bamboo plant. And in, in six weeks, it's gonna go from dirt to 80 feet tall. It's the most amazing plan ever. Buy one, get one, right? You need to buy this right now. And so many people are like, yeah, I'm fired up. I need that plant, it's mine, I'm getting it. And they bring it home and they're so excited and they start planting it in the ground and then they read the directions. <laughs> they find out the actual truth that no, actually you've gotta stay consistent on it and water it and nurture it for five freaking years every single day and then in six weeks it goes from zero to 80 feet tall in six weeks time that's the truth that's the consistency part and that's the part that most people in that window 95 percent of entrepreneurs in any kind of industry 95 percent of them quit 
And most of the times, the reason for their failure is because they just gave up before the breakthrough. That's it. So my encouragement to you guys, share this out if you found this valuable, because there are a lot of people who just need to know they are doing the work. They are getting the results. They are. They're doing the thing. They're filling their mind with personal development. They're educating themselves. They're putting themselves out there. They're getting practice every time they go Facebook Live. They're getting more and more practice. More and more people are seeing them. They're getting more precise. They're delivering whatever. They're seeing results. They're getting results. They just don't see them. They're getting results, but they're all in here. They're underneath. Eventually though, it's gonna go crazy. And then people will be like, wow, she just came from out of nowhere. She just came from out of nowhere. I mean, it's just like she was nothing and doing nothing. And now all of a sudden she's a car bonus earner. And she's earned a trip and she's the top rank of the company and she's on the stage with a big sign and whatever. And oh, I've never even heard of her until now. That person has been building and nurturing and watering and pouring into their business or their brain or their personal development or their relationships, networking and connecting for years before you saw them. So my encouragement to you guys is don't quit. Like seriously, don't be a statistic. Most people quit, not us, not you, right? Share this if you found this was helpful. Comment if you're watching the replay. If you're new to my videos, type new below. I'd love to know and I'd love to say hi to you. I appreciate you guys, I love you guys. I hope you guys find a little heart and a little hustle on these videos and I will see you guys on the next one. Love you all, bye bye.